when I said Amen, uh, Dr. Alexander appeared. I'm so grateful for all of you for taking time and coming back to the class. Let's continue. Welcome to today's lecture number 12 on this fourth century history of Christianity. As we continue to read centuries after centuries, we are really amazed to see the wonder works of God. And God is behind in our lives and particularly God is the God of history because our Lord is the Lord of the history and this Lord has done amazing things. Let's look at some of the um, incidents that happened in this fourth century yesterday and day before yesterday we look at some of those uh, incidents and we come back again to see. We continue the lecture where we stopped yesterday. So particularly in this fourth century, Macedonianism is one of the influence, influencing philosophy that influenced people in this fourth century. Macedonianism. It is important to mention this heresy as we are studying heresy. Even tomorrow, or day after tomorrow, I, have been, I will be teaching two days continuously from morning nine to evening five. Um, several series of lectures to complete the entire one month course in two days. That's the need. I need to at least uh, finish. I have uh, 30 hours, 30 hours of teaching in two days. Uh, it's a hectic uh, teaching. As I'm preparing the lectures for heresies, even this class really helped me. All the heresies that we discuss here in church history, and they, it's just like, you know, taking the lessons that I have prepared here but translating into Telugu and also adding a lot of material uh, to talk about Jehovah Witnesses and the, a lot of other um, uh, cultic teachings I will be teaching tomorrow. But let's look at this Macedonianism, the cult. It is important to mention this heresy in connection with the failure of nation because the doctrine of the divinity of the Holy Spirit was also at issue at this time because the doctrine of the Holy Spirit was not finalized in Nation Creed 325. There were other uh, theological issues that need to be discussed. Uh, this Macedonianism, because it became a part of the discussion at Constantinople, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Macedonius, this Macedonianism cult has been developed by this man, Macedonius whom you see, look at down. Of course, it may not be exact picture, but uh, this has been taken from the, uh, the scholars' uh, books. Macedonius, Bishop of Constantinople, declared that the Holy Spirit was a creature subordinate to the Son. He accepted the divinity of the Father and the Son, but he had a difficulty in accepting the Holy Spirit as God. So, also called pneumatomachians, pneumatomachians, the other name for this, from pneuma, means spirit, and um, machomai, means to speak evil against, pneumatomachians, to speak evil against, this is the heresy, because the, the Hilary of uh, Poitier, writing on the Holy Spirit represented the orthodox viewpoint over and against the Macedonians. He's the one who defended and the Hilary of Pythars. So the next one is Athanasius. We need to discuss about the church father Athanasius 293 to 373 AD. The Athanasius was a patriarch of Alexandria. You remember I have been discussing about Alexandria in this African context. A great city produced a lot of scholars and there was an Alexandrian school of theology during that even third, fourth, even in the second century. Champion of Trinitarian orthodoxy. 
this Athanasius was the champion of Trinitarian orthodoxy. He helped to bring the East together against the Arians. The Arian controversy we're going to see. So he's the one who brought East together against the Arian heresy. The impetus for his argument was from the doctrine of salvation, if salvation is union with Christ, if through Christ we become partakers of divine nature. Second Peter 1 4. Then Christ must be both God and man because no creature can unite us to God. Because Arius denied the divinity of the Lord Jesus. He said, I think I have explained the other day, Arius mentioned Jesus is just one of the ions. So God the Father created the entire universe. No, God first created this ion, the word, the eternal logos. Then this logos, the word, the Lord Jesus created the universe. The universe has been created by the Lord Jesus, no doubt about it. But no, this ion has been created by the Heavenly Father. So Jesus is a created being. And also he said there was a time that he was not, the logos was not existed. The pre-existence of the Lord Jesus had been questioned by Arius. So this Athanasius encountered him with his ap apologia and uh, he, his argument is from 2 Peter 1, 4. Partakers of the divine nature. Then Christ must be both God and man because no creature can unite us to God. So he is one of the outstanding church fathers who stood for the truth and developed a Christian philosophy during that fourth century. Key words of his teaching. Apology against the Arians. I think I posted this. Uh, key works. So let me find out if I can find other works also I can post. Today I posted this apology against the Arians, the document. Maybe I'll find out the other documents and I'll post. Four are Orations against the Arians. So, if you really want to know what is Arianism and how to um, defend and how not to believe Arianism, you need to re read uh, this uh, his works, Athanasius' works. Even Arian controversy can be seen here and there, even in the churches here and there, in a different form. So. Athanasius' works really help us to develop clear theology. History of the Arians. If you want to know what is Arianism and the history of Arianism, you can read this. These are the primary sources, particularly in historiography. We need primary sources to understand the root cause of the problem. That's the reason I am, exp I am exposing you to the primary sources. If you really want to know what is Arian, Arian, who is Arian, and what is Arianism, what is that cult, and how Chet solved it, we need to go to the primary sources. We have two sources, primary, secondary, and traditory. Most of the time, people depend on the third sources. You know, primary, somebody has quoted primary sources, and some other person has heard from them and wrote. They, don't, they don't, do not know what is exactly uh, the incidents. So as a historian, as, most of the times I give time for primary sources. So even I read a couple of pages from this, they are amazing. It's kind of wealth that we can keep with us to understand the real history. So that's the reason I'm encouraging. Maybe I'll try to post those uh, primary sources. History of the Arians and also the other work foot one is the incarnation of the word of God. This is really an amazing primary source. Athanasius work, those people are really scholars. They invested time to understand the word of God and also the human philosophy and the logic and surrounding false teachings. 
um, if you have a time in the future, you can read five times driven into exile for his orthodox beliefs. It was very strong for his convictions, the biblical convictions. As a result, he had been thrown into prison for five times, spent 17 of his 45 years of as patriarch in exile. Remember, 75 minus 45 minus 17? Twenty-eight. Only 28 years he was out. The other years he spent in prison for the sake of his beliefs. So these are the people who teach us lessons to enjoy the kingdom of God. What all we have suffering today, it is nothing compared to those people. Today what Corona can do, it all, maybe it will take our life. It's not going to do more than that and we will enjoy in the kingdom of God forever and ever but we need to stand for God and do something for God's kingdom the Cappadocian fathers I think you need to read more on this I don't have time to explain all that these Cappadocian fathers are an amazing scholars philosophers and uh, people of intellectuals during that time particularly in the fourth centuries three natives of the province of Cappadocia in Asia Minor. Look at here. Christianity in first, second, third, fourth, and fifth centuries. Why I'm segregated like this till fifth century? Christianity is Asian religion. Christianity is... Christianity had been deeply rooted in Asia, not in the West. Sadly, this Asian Christianity died out and the Western Christianity again has been polluting the Asia in a wrong philosophy and theology. As a result, our people are not able to understand. These Cappadocian fathers, all the fathers of whomever I am talking about, particularly in the fourth century, this is the century of people from uh, African context. You know, the Christianity was there, flourished in Africa when there is no Christianity at all in the West. You know, that's the reason Af African Christianity has a rich heritage and rich theology and uh, the church has uh, high values. And uh, the church history, particularly the Cappadocian fathers in Asia Minor, who are they? These are the four giants. You can read more on them. If somebody wants to write a paper on Cappadocian fathers, it's just fine. History is history. Just you read bring the truths and maybe you can give a, a footnote and end note where you take some sources otherwise you write uh, that's the reason i'm giving primary sources also if you want to write something on arianism you have a lot of primary sources your paper will become one of the outstanding paper because most of the people don't write papers from the first uh, the primary sources and uh, if you write a paper on those primary sources that will be valued more in the academic world. Who are they? These Cappadocian fathers. Basil of uh, Caesarea, 330 to 379. Gregory of Nessa, 335 to 394. Gregory of uh, Nazarenus, 330 to 390. These are were famous uh, church fathers during this fourth century. Let's see what they did during this fourth century very basically they were able to clarify the language used to describe god clarifying the language to describe theology theodicy uh, no, uh, uh, theology the proper theology particularly a theology on god language that the nations and uh, origines the people who attended a nation, nation council, and the Oregonists who followed Oregon philosophy and theology could agree upon a, upon in unity against the Arians. These are the um, Cabrician fathers, Homo Vusia. They let's see what is their contribution in 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 terms of 
theology. These are the fathers who introduced this homoousia. You know, that's fine talking about Trinity, but how do we understand? How are they equally God at the same time? At the one time, we don't believe that only one God, we believe only one God, but at the same time, three persons. And also we say they existed forever and ever. There is no beginning for any one of them. And also we believe three of them are equally God. To clarify that theology, to clarify that language, to say the language, it is easy. But to prove it and to help people to understand, to clarify that, these Capdatian fathers you introduce these words, homo usia. What is this homo usia? Homo usia, the one nature, being our essence of God, the Father and Son, share fully and equally, making them one God. They clarify. What is that? The one nature, three of them having the same nature, being the essence of God the Father and Son share fully and equally making them one God. Hypostasis. Hypostasis. The paraclete. Okay. Homoousius. Homoousia is clarified the relationship between God the Father and the Son. And the second one, hypostasis. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit, and distinct from him, which the divine nature exists in Father and Son, making them two distinct persons. Two distinct persons. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit, and distinct from in which the divine nature exists in Father and Son. No, in, even in father and son, that divine nature exists from the beginning. The, the divine nature of the paraclete, making them two distinct persons. They also settle a dispute surrounding the deity of the Holy Spirit by extending the term homousia to the Holy Spirit. You know, initially the term has been uh, in, 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 incorporated, incorporated, included only God the Father and the Son, but later on they clarified the divinity of the Holy Spirit by including Holy Spirit into that homousias. That's called homousias. The first one is homousia, this homousias. They are responsible for the contemporary expression of the doctrine of the Trinity. And today, as we try to understand the doctrine of the Trinity, whatever the explanation and theological lessons people give, the credit goes to this Eparatian fathers. They are the people who laid foundation. Namely, that God is three. God is three persons existing eternally in one single being or nature. And today we very easily People talk about it, people start writing books, but all the credits goes credit goes to these Cappadocian, Cappadocian fathers. They are the people who clarified the language and who explained this. Namely, that God is three persons existing eternally in one single being or nature. In one single being, God is existed in, in three persons. Three hypostases in one osia. Three hypostases in one osia. What is that? In that same essence. Essence is only one. But three hypostases, three personalities in one essence. They clarify the language and also the theology and also the terms. I think I request somebody can read this Nation Creed. Every day we read, not we, but some who are the members of mainland churches, they read, but some of some others, uh, particularly the brethren, Pentecostals and the others, uh, maybe now and then, but 
very rarely they read. I think this is an opportunity for all of us to read again. Can somebody volunteer to read the nation creed? It displayed on the screen. Okay, can I go on now? Yes, please, Srinivas. Okay. The New Sino Constantine Nople, Constant, Constantino Politine Creed 381. Constantine no Politine Creed 381. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made men and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascending into heaven and sits on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead. Whose kingdom shall have no end and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and we believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of, uh, for the, remission of the of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Srinivas, for reading. So I want to give you an assignment because this course is being audited without any proper a lot of hard work, um, but one work. Particularly to learn history, you need to remember the names, the dates, you know, a lot of uh, exercise for our memory, the growth memory. So what I do is, by heart this uh, nation Constantine creed, this creed. So this is the only exact, only criteria. How many how many days we have, Anna? I think we have till 30, no? This is what is the day today? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, very, very important question. If I have to buy heart, I'll probably take <laughs> oh, the final day. Maybe the last day you can <laughs> today is the uh, 15th. Yeah, you have 15 more days. Every uh, day if you buy heart one line, you will finish. No, I, I'll say now. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Huh? Uh, Please, uh, I'll say. you are okay. an for others. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I'll say what I remember, I'll say. Huh? But wait, well, I, let me um, uh, remove the screen then. Achha, okay, okay. Okay, uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, I'm joking, I know you will do it. I, I, believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, died and were crucified, and on the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, to judge the living and the dead. He will come back again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the um, Holy... This, this I try not to say, but I'll say it. Uh, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Oh, Give him a big clap. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but this is only Apostles' Creed, not the Nicene Creed. Uh, what Hubert correct, correct. said yes, is, yes. Uh, is uh, Apostles' Creed, not yeah. uh, Nicene Creed. Usually the Nicene Creed huh. is said when they are having communion service in the church. Correct, correct. Most correct, of correct. the CSI and other uh, Presbyterian churches Yes. They have, when they have Holy Communion, the Nicene Creed is said. 
yes, on the yes. other matins or morning service or evening services yes. apostolic service apostolic creed is said yes. Yes. so brother francis you want to try okay. <laughs> I, I I used I used to know the Latin version actually like before many years ago. I used to repeat it left and right. Now I don't know. <laughs> you know I used to do In that. Lutheran actually. church also. We used to have every week. We used to. Yeah, Lutheran church also. Lutheran, Methodist, Baptist. Hey. So brother Francis and brother Hubert only five days. The rest of them fifteen days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But no, it's good to memorize and uh, see. Today we talk about the doctrines, ten doctrines. Every, all the ten doctrines are included in this, and the church fathers struggled yes. uh, to compose this uh, creed. And when we have a free time, if you memor memor if you uh, rem re recollect and then ponder on this. You know, it's an amazing, rich theology. Our minds will be filled with the theology, and uh, mm. this is an amazing. Um, Actually, you know, people who are to get confirmed after baptism in the Church of South India or Presbyterian and Lutheran churches, mm. the candidates were uh, are trained for three months in mm. catechism, in which they have to learn the Lord's Prayer, the Nicene Creed, and the Apostolic Creed. All the Ten Commandments, and what is the signs of the communion? Why we take communion? All these things, or all these things are even provided in the ESV study, uh, ESV Bible. All these things are there at the end of the uh, after Revelation. Yes, that's wonderful. Okay, let's continue. Sixty. 60% of this wording, particularly the God to God, light to light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, all this wording, it came from the Nicene the Creed of 325 under Constantine. Okay. They added a few more words, particularly about Jesus being born to Virgin Mary, crucifixion, resurrection, uh, Pontius Pilate. These things were added subsequently in 385 Creed. Uh, no, no, these things were available in 381 only. The question yeah. of the Holy Spirit is the, uh, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke the prophets. All these things are added later. So the, that's what I'm saying. No, no, no. that is first, only 381. 60% of it came from the 325 creed. Yeah, that's that is right. Council. That is right. Only... And, only and issue was about the only, it, it evolved only over a period of time. No, only issue was Holy Spirit. That's the thing uh, they added later. Yeah. Yeah. As they, this has been developed because these heret heretics, they start questioning the divinity at one point, the pre-existence of Christ by considering all the those days uh, prevailed heresies to subside that heresy, they developed this creed so that people are cling to the right theology. So are you able to see the screen? Yes, yes. 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 Okay, so let's continue with the uh, uh, next issue in this fourth century, church-state relations. How is, the, how is the relationship between the church and the state? From persecution to power. Particularly in the fourth, fourth century, church, even we have seen the terrific persecution in second and third centuries. Even in the third, fourth century, initially there was persecution, but later on, from persecution, church moved to acquire power. Under emperor Galerius, uh, particularly in AD 311, uh, he persecuted the church. This represented the last and most terrible persecution of the church by the Roman Emperor. He is the last terrific persecutor of the church. And after this, church climbed to the power. Let's see what did he do. Four anti-Christian edicts, like a lance he made during his um, reign. Number one. All church buildings were to be destroyed. 
all Bibles should be burned and all Christian worship has been forbidden. All churches should be destroyed and uh, no Bible, Bible should be burned and uh, no Christian worship. Worship has been forbidden, public worship or private worship. See, he attacked the sources. All clergy arrested and imprisoned. Since there should not be any worship, he made sure make, he, he wanted to make sure that there should not be any clergy outside to conduct the church service. All the clergy arrested and imprisoned. All clergy must offer sacrifice to the gods of gods or face torture. Here it is. Like um, a, a book of Daniel, they also faced terrific persecution. All clergy must offer sacrifice to the gods. You know, he wanted to convert the Christian clergy to the pagan clergies or face torture. They had been tortured terribly and all citizens throughout the empire were to sacrifice to the gods or face execution. Either you face execution or sacrifice to the gods. Priests, either you face execution or you turn as the clergy of the pagan gods. Very intense, terrific persecution by this glorious. So in 311, the emperor admitted that he could not quench Christianity. So he issued a new degree. He tried all possible ways, but he did not succeed because people stood for the truth. So he issued a new degree, one of religious tolerant, toleration. Sick at the home, sick at the time, he asked Christians to pray for him. He died that same year. He was sick at home and when he was sick at home, he asked Christians to pray for him. He died the same year. So I may not bring any implication here, but God is sovereign. He takes care of his church. No one can suppress the church. No one can eliminate the Bible. No one can annihilate, wipe out his clergy or his individual believers. Let, let's look to persecution to power. That individual persecuted church terrifically and that terrific persecution church moved to the power constantine 274 to 337 in 306 constantine proclaimed emperor of the west but the west was divided between constantine britain france and spain and uh, Maxentius, Maxentius got Italy and Northwest Africa. Constantine tolerant Maxentius anti-Christian. These two had a different opinions about Christianity. Constantine, who was the emperor to this part of the empire, Britain, France, and Spain. He was tolerant to Christianity, but the Maxentius, who got Italy and not Africa, he was against anti-Christian. Let's see what happened. Particularly in the history of Christianity, the Battle of Milan Bridge is very famous. Battle of the Milan Bridge in 312. By this sign, a labrum, you will conquer. Let me read from the primary source. So, he, the Constantine, saw with his own eyes 
the trophy of a cross of light in the heavens above the sun and an inscription conquered by this attached to it. Then in his sleep, the Christ of God appeared to him to make a likeness of that sign which he had seen in the heavens and to use it as a safeguard in all engagement with his enemies. The tradition says, and some historians documented it, and they say this is the Anubhava of this Constantine experience. He saw a vision like a above the, above the sun and the sky. He saw the symbol. With this you go and conquer. And uh, Constantine at the Milan Bridge in AD 312, he had a battle. Constantine with a far smaller army prayed to the Christian God for victory. By then he was not a Christian, but he was sympathetic to Christianity. He had a vision and uh, he saw the cross above the sun and uh, he heard, go with this sign. And uh, when he had the war, he prayed to the Christian God for victory and triumphed miraculously over Maxentius who died in the battle. You know, the Maxentius, who is the other king of the divided kingdom, empire. You know, in that war, when, when Constantine declared war with that sign, you know, Maxentius who died in the battle believed that the Christian God had granted him victory and so he became the great champion and protector of Christian, Christians because he had the vision he went to the battle with the sign and he believed he got the victory only because of the God of Christians so the great champion and protector of Christians. So at the age 32 was ma master of the West, Edict of Milan. So when he got the victory and uh, when he got the enlightenment, he gave a different edict, different law to the entire empire. East and the West combined together, came under his dominion. While Constantine was winning the West, Lucians won the East, controlling the Eastern half of the empire. Constantine and uh, Licinius met in Milan and agreed on a policy of religious freedom for all religions. Christian and pagan. Edict of Malam. That's the edict ego. Freedom of religion. Irrespective of any religion. Religious freedom in the history for the first time had been granted by this Constantine at the Edict of Malam. So this was the first time that a head of a state gave Christian full legal status status. Christianity got 100% legal status for the first time in the history of Christianity. For the first time. Christianity fully legal status acquired by this Constantine for the first time in the history of Christianity. Christianity not declared state religion under Constantine. But it did change the relationship between church and state. Since then, from the beginning to the fourth century, there is a hostile relationship between the church and the state. State introduced a lot of bills to oppress, to annihilate, and to kill, and to wipe out. But that didn't happen. For the first time, Constantine gave full freedom to all the religions and also acknowledge Christianity as a religion and uh, Christianity 
got its status and fully legally it started exercising its faith faith and let's continue so 324 the battle of Chrysophilus in Bithynia, Asia Minor. Constantine invaded the East to fight what he thought was a holy war against Licinius to rescue the Eastern Church from persecution by an anti-Christian tyrant. He did war to rescue the Christians. Licinius taken prisoner and ex executed. Later on, even with that uh, religious tolerance, Licinius uh, violated that um, uh, agreements and he started persecuting Christians. As a result, Constantine declared war and he won the war and Licinius had been taken as a prisoner and later he had been executed. Constantine became the single undisputed matter of the entire Roman Empire. Constantine's conversion, the most significant since the Apostle Paul's, because it changed the religion, religious destiny of the Roman Empire. It's like a second man who change the destiny and the shape of Christianity. For the first time, Apostle Paul, who was the persecutor, became the follower of Christ and a lot of change in the history of Christianity in the initial stage. But in, the, in that hour of persecution, in that of torture and turmoil and uh, in, injustice, Constantine changed the religious destiny of the Roman Empire. A great individual. Council of Nation, Nation 325. Constantine's twofold rational. Let me read as it is from the primary source. First, to bring the diverse judgments found by all nations representing the deity to a condition, as it were, of settled uniformity and second to restore a healthy tone to the system of the world which was then suffering under the power of gracious disease you may be wondering what is that uh big closed bracket in research if it is a big bracket closed brass there is a little modification there is a little modification it may it might be single f but it may be big f there but which was might not be there exactly in the original primary source but they added it that's the reason the big bracket there maybe if you learn all the footnote and note all those you will learn it so constantine also helped formulate the creed of nation 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 creed what yes. we um, uh, reside in our church. No, even Constantine played a vital role in the formulation of that creed. Again, we see the government intervening not only in the administrative affairs of the church, but the doctrinal doctrinal ones. The banishment of areas was the first time that the state had punished someone for heresy. State involved even in the theological aspect, state involved to punish the heretics. For the first time, areas had been banished, punished. Okay, let's continue. Constantine ordered all Donates exile and their property to be turned over to Selena, the young 16. He started reforming the church. You remember the other day we discussed about Donates, their beliefs, their practices. 
So Constantine banished them. Either you go or get excommunication. The decree failed to achieve what Constantine hoped. The return of the Donatists to the Catholic Church. He rescinded the decree in 321. He took back the decree in 231. This is the first time that an emperor had used the power of the state to try to force descending Christians back into fellowship with the Catholic Church. Okay, that's end of the lecture today. Because it's a history, we need to go a little slow, otherwise you feel difficulty and at least I closed exactly at seven o'clock. 45 minutes of lecture is okay.